This is Official Nerd Business. Hello nerd boys and girls, welcome back to Euler. We are looking at problem number 15. And as you can see I've already created the template file. I've changed a little bit in the template. This is the first time we're using uh, two default uh, parameters. And I put a little backtick in between. Um, this was designed to be a uh, tab, but for some reason I can't seem to fix uh, the tabs in a doc trick keep getting replaced by spaces, and spaces are a valid character, so I can't really split on spaces. Um, so I uh, decided to take another dedicated character that I won't be using in any sort of text here um, to um, to separate these blocks here. Could have gone with another uh, semicolon and just said, well, four, make a block or whatever, but I want the freedom to be able to extend this without altering the, the counting code. So I've, um, I've chosen the backtick here. Now, what uh, parameters are we putting in here? Um, starting, uh, we're getting a grid starting in the top left corner of a 2x2 grid and only being able to move to the right and down. There are exactly six routes to the bottom right corner. Over on the website for a problem uh, 15, um, link in the description, uh, you can uh, actually find a little uh, graphic that uh, details this. Uh, but it's it's true, and there are six ways to get uh, from the top left to the bottom right on a 2x2 two two grid. Moving only left and down. Um, or right and down, sorry. Um, how many routes are there on a 20x20 20 20 grid? Now that's quite a big number. Let's uh, try and find out what it is. I've... Uh, I've got all my uh, boilerplate code here and we'll start working uh, on this end. Um, and as you might be aware, um, you can count how many ways you can reach a certain node within these kinds of... Um, uh, if we were, for instance, auto-completion, thank you. Uh, if we took, for example, a grid like this, Um, there is uh, exactly one way to reach this point because you start here there's only also one way to reach this point when you're here you can only go down and there, therefore there is only one way in which you can reach this particular point this point there's also only one route namely down and down it's two steps but it's all together it's only one route to reach this point same you might imagine goes for this one and this one now the fun starts, because for this point, there are two ways you can move right and then down, or you can move down and then right. So there's two ways, and as you can see, that's... Um, well, let's, let's take a look at this point here. Um, there's the right, right, down, there's the down, right, right, and there's one in between where you move right, down, and right. Those are the three ways in which you can reach this point. Now for this number it's more obvious than for the two we had before. Um, it's the sum of whatever is above it and whatever is to the left of it. So this number can be reached in three ways exactly the same as this one can. And this one can be reached in six ways. We have three to the three ways to reach this node and three ways to reach that node so combined makes six ways in which you can reach this node so there's our if you uh, imagine uh, lines between here there's our 2x2 two two grid it has nine um, nodes in, in, this, in this graph and there are six total ways to reach the bottom so using that approach uh, we might um, be tempted to do the following. Um, we'll have uh, the actual grid, which is a two-dimensional array. So it's an array consisting of 
raise again consisting of uh, we can uh, define that yet um, consisting of the actual numbers so we want to um, We want to run through all of these uh, rows. Um, what did we define for width and height? Well, it's kind of a moot point. We want to run through both of these axes. Um, and we want to open a new row for each one of them. Why am I getting an indentation error here? Oh, glorious. I've reset something in the editor and now it's all um, what previously was spaces, now it sees as tabs. And I do prefer tabs, so it broke something. We are that's fixed now. Um, let's see. Eventually, when we do this, we can. This should now have. Uh, let's, let's see what it has. Yes, it has 20. There's one row of 20 cells. So uh, we ran through the entire. Um, height of the thing, we are now ready to insert 20 elements in each of these and eventually the very last one will have a um, pretty big number um, so let's see Alright. Yeah, I do. It should return one. It doesn't. Interesting. <laughs> that's weird. Uh, but we do have 20 elements in this one, so that's uh, that's alright. Um, though we want 21, right? If we look at the 2x2 two two grid again, it's a line and a line, but we are interested in the points, the points and the points in between. So we have one point for every line plus one additional point for the end of it. So I'm going to say m plus 1. This will range from 0 to and including m. So now we have 21 elements in this array which we need to calculate the size of a 20 by 20 grid and I'm going to Lower the test case here a little bit. Right. Then, um, I'm going to make a shorthand for whatever row we are currently working on, and I'm going to. Start this row off with a one. Uh, in fact, I'm going to start this one off at one, and then and. Um, is this going to do what I want? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, plus.
No, this does not. All right. Um, Yes, the first row now contains only zero or only ones, as we saw with the example here. If we have some point here and some point here and some point here, each of these points will have a possible number of paths to this point. It will be one for each of these points. So that's all right for the top row. And um, then we want this here. So this should start off every consecutive row with a 1 as well. Which it does. And then start at 1 and go all the way up to n plus 1 to again get the one extra we need also for the, the bottom row, if you will. And we want to append to this row and whatever is on the previous row at this position. So that's in the grid uh, at uh, i minus 1. Position J plus whatever is on this row at position J minus one, so the previous position. Something go past right. Yes. Now we want to return the very last element of that. And that's six. Let's use a slightly bigger test case. This should be 20, right? Now let's run it in full uh, by using main. Here we go. Run that. Give me number 15. 20 and 20 will be fine. Now there is a big number, there is a lot of ways in which you can reach the bottom right cell on a 20 by 20 grid. And this number is actually correct. If you enter this over a project order, you will get the green check mark. Now when you do, you will also get the access to an overview and the overview will discuss every, the several different methods of uh, trying this in a slightly different way. Um, one, one thing I um, thought out hold by myself um, is the following um, you might on uh, definitely on a bigger grid to demonstrate uh, this is how the grid looks at 20 by 20 um, so running this again Uh, I called it at uh, 33 again. Uh, anyways, this is how it looks at 33, and as you can see, the numbers are steadily increasing. Uh, if we do this for 2020, this gets pretty big, and as you might imagine, this, uh, especially for bigger things, um, might start eating up memory, um, but we don't need every uh, individual row we can suffice with only the the, the last row um, so that does take a sort of the same approach you do the same calculations but you don't store everything in one grid 
you can just say um, row is um, this one here for every uh, width of the grid and then Since we already filled the first row, we don't need to go all the way up here. We do need that one. And now we can simply say uh, the current index of the row is whatever is before us and note that the uh, first one we put in here so we create a list consisting of n21 ones that's our first row then we're gonna um, do the second row the third row the fourth row the etc until we hit 21 here again or um, uh, 20 itself I believe uh, we, we're gonna test in a smaller test case one of which we know the answer uh, I'm afraid I'm gonna get an off by one error here. Sh shouldn't, <laughs> but I probably will. Um, so note that the one in the very first cell will uh, remain unchanged because we started index or the second index, index number one in this case, but it's the second spot. So the one uh, out front will always stay the same. Um, And we want to add whatever number is above us, which is the actual cell we're mutating right now, uh, and whatever number is in front of us, and that's this one. And this should, um, this will leave us with only one row, and we should quite simply be able to return. Pop, by the way, if we have a list, uh, we can call pop, and pop uh, modifies the list in that it uh, takes off the last element. Uh, so this variable will now have one um, element in its list less, and which element will it pop off? It will pop off automatically the very last element of the array and return that. So if we were to uh, say, um, if we were to assign this to a variable, I would be whatever last value we put into this list, and the list itself would be modified as well. Pop takes an argument, so we could specify another position in the list to be extracted, uh, but it's pretty common and slower to do it this way. It's pretty common just to leave it like this and pop the very last element off of our list. There's different ways of extracting uh, items from a list too, but this is uh, this is pretty standard, and we are interested here in the very last element, so that's fine. Uh, let's. Uh, if we run this, let's not return attempt number one, but attempt number two. So note that this does all the same calculations as our previous loop did, only it stores less of its intermediate results. So it's uh, equally hard on processor, but slightly less hard on memory, if that's an uh, issue. Yes, it's fine, all right. As you can see in the results section, uh, we get the 20 we need for uh, a 3x3 three three grid, and it prints only the last row, and we are not storing any other rows in memory because we are looking over this uh, row and adding to each element uh, whatever was already in this element i.e. what was on the row above it and what is in front of it so we're doing practically the same thing as this one with a slightly less of a memory footprint calculation wise it's the same timing wise it will probably be the same as well um, the other one took one thousandth of a second or something, and if we run this, good chance we won't even get timing information. And yeah, it's it's enormously quick, and we are still getting the right answer. And as you can see, we are still printing, so we could take out these prints here. That's a bit cleaner, and if we rerun this. in no time whatsoever. Now there is a um, third approach which takes us into um, combinatorics, into how can we combine whatever options we have here. 
the overview is uh, pretty good at uh, restating this problem slightly so that using combinatorics becomes more logical. Uh, what they say is that it's not very interesting to look at this as a grid, um, but more in the sense that to reach the bottom there are um, uh, of, a, of a 20 by 20 grid. There's um, some instructions you need to do, so you, you need to travel to the right a couple of times and then you need to travel down a couple of times. And basically the, the number you get at the bottom right corner is the number of ways in which you can shuffle these guys around in unique ways. So that's done with combinatorics, that's done with the uh, a notation of some number over another number. You can you can look that up in the um, in the overview. The 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 way to to uh, write that it uses uh, factorials. And for those unfamiliar with factorials, if you see a number like this, the exclamation mark makes it a factorial, and this simply means that it's four times three times two times a one of which the times 1 is not very interesting of course, but this 4 factorial is 2 times 3, which is 6, times 4 is 24 and 5 factorial as you might imagine is 5 times all of this and 6 factorial, this number gets big pretty quickly but factorials are used in um, this particular uh, they are used a lot in combinatorics um, because they turn out to be a very good way of expressing how you can pick several things from a collection where order doesn't matter um, and to be precise um, I had prepared a little bit for this because I can't memorize all of this Yes, here we are. Um, so basically it calculates a pretty big factorial and then divides that by the product of two other factorials which turn out to be not quite as big as this one so by division you leave a positive integer. Um, and as you can see here there's only a few calculations that need to be done uh, of course the factorial itself will start uh, multiplying um, and there's three of those um, but all in all that's way less calculations done here than we do here where we simply uh, the, the calculations are uh, m squared or m times n uh, plus one both so this is a pretty big calculation and this one is uh, way more elegant but more complex to uh, to look at it and to show that it actually does what we want we can um, We can run a test case for 3 and 3, which again gives us 20. And if we run it from uh, our main pi, 15 with both default parameters, and there we get our number again over our uh, attempt number 3. Oh, wait, no, it's attempt number 2. Oh, it's copy. Again, 20. and big number. So yeah there's um, problem number 15 uh, as you can see the maths are getting more interesting uh, as we uh, as we keep going along uh, as well as the programming pop is a nice addition uh, and it's fun to think of ways to do this more efficiently I do believe this is one such attempt uh, again it's easier on the memory but not so much on the processor um, yeah, reading up on this is going to be very nice and handy for future uh, challenges because we are going to see combinatorics a couple more times. Hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you for problem number 16.
Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.